Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Uh, so what I did is I was out cleaning some of the new babies and uh, I decided one of them in particular seemed ready for interaction. And so I shot a video of the very first time of me handling that snake, the body language that I'm using to, you know, tell me whether I can touch, not touch, move forward, back off, all that kind of stuff. So I, I shot a video while I was out there doing that, you know, basically live. Uh, working with this baby and you can check it out here. So stay tuned, definitely watch to the end because you can see a lot of cool behavior, uh, especially as she gets more confident. So let me know what you think in the comments, stay tuned. interesting to watch these guys minds work so this baby started out very very defensive uh, only been hatched for about a week this is the second interaction since coming out of the incubator that we've had and already while the baby is very weary and nervous it's also very alert and curious about its surroundings and what's going on it's allowed me to move around it take pictures from several angles has not struck or really taken a, a severely defensive position. Of course, right as I say that, it's probably the most defensive position it's taken yet. Um, but very, very good. Now, obviously, if I stuck my finger in this baby's face right now, it's going to bite. Um, and that's where you've got to learn to back them down from these situations, to read their body language, and to not be intrusive like that. Let the animal figure it out. Let the animal make the next move. Now you see she's moving away or he, whatever, and that's fine. And now I could even put my hand over here, you know, let the animal see my hand, let the animal approach on its own and decide whether it wants to go over there and explore my hand or whether it wants to go the other direction away from it. Let the animal make that decision. Now she's still not sure right now. She initially moved towards it, but you can see her breathing heavy and, and not really sure. So I'm gonna move my hand a little bit let her see that it's a moving, you know, object and let her make her decision. I keep saying her and I don't know. I haven't uh, tried to sex any of these babies yet. So she, she's deciding, eh, you know what? I don't really know about that whole hand thing. I think I'm gonna check out what's this way. Now, one thing that I've found with these guys that can help is a situation like this where she's coming to an edge. You know, you can offer your hand here and if she wants to continue to come this direction, then your hand becomes a bridge to that. And once they're in hand, it's a lot easier to, to maneuver them around. See, so she's just like, you know what? I don't know, dude. And she's, she's very curious, but she's also very nervous. So you can see that her mind's working kind of against herself right now. She wants to approach, she wants to check it out, but she's still kind of fearful. So right now we just wanna make very confident, but not threatening movements. You know, I'm moving all around right now. I'm within range if she wanted to strike and bite me. Uh, baby bloods can really launch themselves. So I'm well within range, but you notice the tongue flicks have stopped. So right now she's not sure, now she's tongue flicking again and backing up and getting herself into a more defensive position. Just watching everything that's going on around her. Now, most people uh, would probably go and pick the animal up right now. I don't think she's quite ready for that. I think I might be able to touch her lightly and allow that to be, you know, a little bit of an interaction. She might swing around, you never know. Light touching, doesn't seem like much, but it's enough to go into that memory bank and tell her, okay, that wasn't so bad. Nothing happened. I'm still here, things are still good. I'm gonna move and sit next to her. So overall, I think this is an animal that's gonna be very personable in time. Um, like I said, she is only a week old. 
This is only her second interaction at all, uh, but I think she's doing very, very well. You see occasional heavy breathing, but she's not racing away. She's not striking wildly. She's not even putting herself in that position that we see with bloods and short tails where they're really feeling threatened and they wanna get ready to, to basically thrash and bite. Uh, she hasn't done that once. So yes, she's nervous, but she's also curious. And so as long as you stoke that curiosity without pushing her to a point where she feels threatened, then you'll continue to make progress. And progress is not on any kind of timetable. This is an animal that'll probably progress very quickly. Some of them will progress very slowly. Um, so it's all about reading the individual animal and putting them in situations to succeed. You know, right now, that's very curious tongue flicks. can still see with the breathing. She's still nervous, but curiosity is, is getting the better of her right now. Hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, little impromptu videos where you can kind of see, you know, this behavior from the very beginning. You know, and this was an animal that came out of the incubator, mean as a dog shit and tax. Wanted nothing but blood coming out of that incubator. And literally just a week where I've opened her tub maybe three or four times for about 20 to 30 seconds, just literally stood there, stared at her, talked to her, and that's it. Did not touch her. This is the first time she's been out of the tub since she was pulled out of the incubator. Uh, right now when she's on this surface, this is her first time on a foreign surface other than that tub and the incubator. And so for an animal, doing this for the first time she's doing extremely well and i love that i love when you get these confident animals and it's just all about working within the parameters of what she'll allow it's about letting her dictate the pace letting her show you what she's comfortable with and just working within that i'm not pushing her very far uh, i'm probably pushing her harder than i've pushed the last two babies that i had out but that's because of the sign she's given me that she's a little bit more comfortable than they were. Um, the golden eye was probably the least comfortable and the T positive 007 I had out was probably a little bit more comfortable, but still not very. So right now I'm just moving my hand around, putting it into a position that can be considered threatening, but not actually threatening her so that she's seeing, okay, he moved around me, nothing happened, I, I got a little nervous, maybe I shouldn't be so nervous. You know, every moment with these guys being so young is a learning experience. And so every negative experience you have with them is gonna set you back, every positive experience you have is gonna set you forward. So you would rather have a limited positive interaction than push too far and turn it negative. So it's very tempting right now to just pick her up but I'm trying to avoid that. Now, if she crawls onto me, then that's different. Uh, then I don't have an issue picking her up because at that point, she's already made that decision that she's interested. My arm's right there. So she's basically surrounded by me on three sides right now, but she's heading towards me instead of away from me. She's so cute. Beautiful, beautiful, soulful eyes. Huh, you do have very pretty eyes. I just want to scratch your chin, but you're so little that I think it'll scare you. I don't think you're quite ready for that yet. Where are you going? Is that your new hiding spot? Can we touch you a little? Mm -hmm. Nice and gentle. Nice and gentle. Go down in there. Okay, she's handling me, touching her very well right now. But still very nervous. And you got to remember, right now this position, having her up like this, is very, very unnatural. So you want to be gentle. And that's a learning experience for her to go, okay, I was up in the air, but I was safe. And so far, so good. 
but you can see the heavy breathing there, which is an indication of some level of distress. Now, obviously, um, any time that we are looking to move forward, you're going to create a little unrest and a little bit of stress in these animals. Uh, but you want to just do it in, you know, minor, minor amounts. This is probably as long of a session as I've ever done for a first time, but I just wanted to give you guys a chance to see a little bit of it. Normally, this session would last maybe 30 seconds to two minutes tops. Um, but also, once again, I mean, just look at the confidence in this animal. You know, she's approaching. I'm not forcing her to touch me. She's choosing to. So I have to move her when she gets down there. But you can see, no interest in coming back and biting me. She's not doubling back. She's not squirming. You know, she's moving like you'd expect an animal to move. But she's not, she's not giving any negative indications that this is a problem for her right now. She's very, very quickly, quickly processing information and very, very quickly realizing that, hey, you know what? This isn't so bad and this is a pretty cool space out here and I'm just gonna keep going over this edge until it drives Dan nuts. But see, to, to have a baby this young, to be able to grab it like this and not, not have that create an adverse reaction is really, really wonderful because typically what I just did would indicate a predator type maneuver and typically elicit a appropriate response, which would be a defensive response. But this is where you use that little brain power to your advantage and you continue to have positive interactions and you continue to respect the animal's boundaries. If I went to pick her up and she got very upset or started thrashing, then you start leaving her alone. You know, a lot of people try to force the issue at that point and kind of, you know, force the animal into submission and you're not building a relationship at that point. You're just really creating an animal that distrusts you and maybe eventually you get to a state of learned helplessness where it just gives up and it's like, whatever, if I die, I die. Um, and I know a lot of us feel that way, but it's not good for an animal like this to feel that way that doesn't have complex emotions. But yeah, I mean, she's just doing really great. This is an animal that'll probably make a really wonderful pet for somebody or breeder, of course, because there's some nice lineage in here. Are you coming back on my leg again? You're gonna fall. I don't think you're understanding that you can't, you don't have legs, you can't walk down the stairs there, Missy. Okay, so I'll cut this short. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, just to see how you read the body language and then use it to, you know, decide when you're gonna push and when you're gonna pull back. And right now she hasn't really given me any signs that tell me I should pull back, and so I haven't. But I also need to remember that if I push too far, that I can then turn this positive experience into a negative experience and negate all the wonderful work that we've done so far. So that's why I'm not touching the top of her head, I'm not rubbing her chin yet or doing any of that stuff. Even though I think I could probably get away with it right now, uh, you don't wanna do that kind of stuff until you know, until you really feel that the animal is, is gonna tolerate that. And right now I'm not there yet with this animal. So we're just going within the realm of what I think she's going to tolerate. And we're going to put her back in a minute and end this on a positive note. So let me grab her here. Wait till she's going over the edge. And I'm just going to swing around. I got her tub right here all cleaned up, ready to go. Put her back in there. You can see they're still staying wet which they will do for a while since these guys don't shed for about three to six months. I don't necessarily keep them this wet for that period of time. Once I know they're drinking on their own very well and once I know that they're eating steady and they're maybe three meals in, I'll uh, stop keeping them so wet and then just monitor from there their body condition. And sometimes, you know, you'll have one that starts to look a little haggard and you go back. Uh, and most of the time they hit the ground running and they're great. And then they'll head into their first shed eventually. But very confident, very fun little animal. Hope you guys enjoyed.